beautiful day. You're lucky. Quick show of hands. How many people this is your first Chicago Gourmet? First time here ever. Okay, awesome. Okay, good. Welcome. And how many of you have been here before but have not been in a wine seminar up here in the Coral Room? Okay, good. So you guys are finding out this is like the best kept secret of gourmet. You get to try all these awesome wines and it's not an extra ticket price and you get like a lot of bang for your buck because we got this guy with us today. So before I get started, just look for, I do want to mention a couple things. Um, cell phones, silenced or turned off please. You can have uninterrupted time. Um, I am Nina Madonia. I work for Inspired Catering and Events, which is uh, owned by the Stefani Group, Karen Stefani, and my cards are back there. So. Feel free if you ever need a caterer to give me a call. And uh, without further ado, this is music and wine and what two better things are there in this world? I can't think of any. Um, Seraphin Alvarado, Master Sommelier, hey. Southern Wine and Spirits of Illinois. Hey. He's the coolest guy ever. Hey. So much fun. Enjoy. Well, this is the first time that uh, in nine years that I've done a seminar at this time slot, five o'clock. So honestly, I was concerned. <laughs> in terms of the crowd, the crowd, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. But, but it seems like we're okay. So, uh, let me put it over here. I talk a little bit loud, so get the volume it down. Yeah. So the uh, the how this all came about. So the theme this year is uh, food is art, right? So there's an artistic component, an art component involved within the food element of the festival. And I thought, perfect. So let's do something um, along those lines involving wine. And my background, before I got uh, in love with wine, my first love was music. And uh, I discovered music early age, in 14, somewhere around there. So I played music. I did a music, uh, I did college scholarship through music, with music, and uh, back in Puerto Rico. And it's always been one of my true passions. And the way that I've learned about wine has been through the music sensibility. I don't know if it makes sense, but different. some people have more scientific approach, and there's different perspectives, how you approach, we all end up in the same place, right? But mine was more with having that mindset of, of serving wine and appreciating wine as an aesthetic object in itself. So there's a lot of parallels, and we talk about balance and harmony and composition and all these words that we use within wine and music and art overall, I, I, that's how I visualize wine and, and relate to wine. The other thing is that I think wine evokes uh, emotions. And I did a, what's that called? I was right back here. I'm uh, uh, one of the past presidents of the Society of Wine Educators uh, Association, and they do a brilliant conference year in, year out. And I always do these off the beat and path themes with them. And just a month ago, right, we did a wine and emotions uh, pairing. And the idea was to, Kind of see if wine has a capability of evoking emotions in, within us, like art has, like right, and, and music in that sense does as well. So uh, along those lines, uh, I've done a couple of shows at City Winery. I have a band called The Rack and the Riddler. Have you ever heard about The Rack and the Riddler? <laughs> so The Rack and the Riddler is a is a reference to champagne collection, right? The rack and the person who sh shakes the bottle, the Riddler. So we have, we're all industry members, and we did a couple of shows at City Winery based on wine and music pair. And it worked, and people were really into it, and people, so, okay, what I'm trying to say is that I need your state of mind to be with me. This is one of those things that you come skeptical, and you come, well, let's see, what's all about, it's not gonna work. It's like, 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 you have, like, 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 you're gonna go into a session to be hypnotized, but you're ready, he's not gonna hypnotize me, it's not gonna happen. So you have to come already with your willingness to ride with me. Let's just go with the vibe. And at the end, you may say, you know what? It's a whole bunch of BS didn't work out. But at least <laughs> the wines were good. <laughs> you have to come with that open mind perspective. Like anything, right? Come open mind and let's see where it takes us. Right? Let's see where it takes us. And, and there's nothing. Safe is not going to take us anywhere. You have to take. A risk, a leap of faith. So let's see what happens. So the, the whole project, how we're going to do it, is essentially we have six wines. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six wines in front of us. All different styles, different regions, different expressions within, within, right, within what they are. And then we're going to talk about genres of music. Okay? 
So we're going to think about pairing music, like I said, with country, uh, pairing wine with country. And I'm going to select the song. We'll, we'll see it. There's, it's a form of meditation. You're going to go in trance with the music and think about the wines and see what works and why. The most important thing is why. And I think. I think that's what the dynamic of all the center is all about. Why and how does that music relate to this wine emotionally within yourself, within your core? We may agree, there may be a consensus among all of us that we all may say, you know what? Wine number one is totally country. <laughs> or hip hop. I got hip hop today as well. And rock and roll and everything is gonna be represented here more or less. Uh, but I want, I want to understand the, the why. How does that connect with you in itself? So the first thing we're going to do is just go through the wines themselves. So we can understand the wines, right? So we're going to understand the profile of the wines. So we can all agree that one number one, this is kind of what it represents one number two. And so we can then connect it with the music itself, right? So let's go with the wines. One number one is a Grüner uh, Veltliner. Anybody had a Grüner Veltliner? Austria? Uh, right? We should be drinking more of Bruno You know this one specifically? Yeah. This is a beautiful wine uh, from the Bacau area, which is the primary area uh, with, within the region of Austria called Lower Austria or Nieder Österreich. And uh, it's just a fantastic wine. It's a wine that really uh, showcases a lot of, like it says there, you're going to see a lot of those green notes, a lot of uh, uh, lentils and herbal notes, yeah. but there's also a very distinctive white pepper note to it, which is a, a unique character of this grape. You only see this in another black grape, very common, dark grape. Anybody knows that pepper quality? Sure, 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 sure. correct. And it's a chemical compound. The beauty about this is a very, it's an objective quality of the wine. It's not something that I'm just making up. It's a, it's a chemical compound that is there that's also present in, in Syrah and gives you the kind of that white pepper quality characteristic. Has a very refreshing quality. Taste it. Yeah. So it has a that vibrant acidity, right? Pronounced acidity. Makes it very lively on the palate, right? It's not dull, it's not too rich, too overpowering. No oak, zero oak. So there's no oak elements, so that gives you that very clean, very bright. Uh, expression on the palate it makes you salivate, right? It gives you the uh, that that uh, sensation of, of you want food or you want another sip. Essentially, so it makes it it's, it's not boring. It's not a boring wine, and it just makes it very intriguing, very exciting. That's wine number one. Okay, so think about vibrant, think about refreshing, think about uh, high tone. Right, in terms of this aromatic quality, not dull. So think about that and see how it correlates with music. One number two is a cherry. I don't know how many of you drink cherry. If that, you should be drinking more. There's a great place in Chicago called Barra. Anybody uh, know Barra? Uh, she's a, a good friend, Liz Mendez, and her husband. They own this wine bar in the West Loop, close to City Winery. And she has really has become a, a true passion ambassador for this category. It's a category that unfortunately got lost somewhere in, in, in the whole revolution of wine here and on, on this side. So people have forgotten about cherry. Cherry is one of the most versatile wines, great complexity, great with food. Um, it's just very, very inspiring wine. If you can see, you can smell that. Very complex, right? What are you, what are you getting? Nuts. A lot of nuts and nuttiness, hazelnut, almond quality characteristics. It's a little bit uh, eccentric, right? If you think about it from a uh, wine style, it's not like the others, right? You're gonna pick, it's like Sesame Street. Which one of these is not like the others? Maybe this one, the cherry. It's very, uh, has a very uh, idiosyncratic expression that's very unique and very distinctive and it's cherry, that's it. There's nothing like it. And, uh, and, and uh, sorry? Sorry, it's very unique and very distinctive. So think about from that perspective in terms of relating to music. It has a very uh, particular way of expressing itself. Um, either you love it or hate it. Could be, could be along those lines. Right? It's not, it's not pop. All right. Think about that. This is not Justin Bieber. 
right? Or somebody else, right? Is that pop? Is that intended to be mass pop, whoever it is? So think about it along those lines. Very, very particular, very defined what it is, very on the edge, very edgy in terms of what it, what it expresses itself. And, and again, it could can, it can, it can, it can be one of those wines that you love or hate. I love this one, by the way. Love it. I can see how some, some, some may not, not enjoy it. Wine number three is Pinot Noir. And this is a Soka Blosser from Willamette Valley in Oregon. How many fans from Willamette Valley in Oregon? Yeah, fantastic wine. Within the United States, uh, this